What's up, shooters? Long time no see. I've just been out fucking around. Today we're gonna be talking about rifle setup. So I'll meet you in the back here in a second. So, whenever you're gonna set up a rifle, the first thing you wanna do is identify the purpose of the rifle. The example I'm gonna be using today is my competition rifle. So all of the components that I put together for this rifle are specifically designed for competition. So we're gonna do a quick breakdown of the rifle, talk about the components, talk about what they do, and talk about other similar components and how they can be used for other purposes of shooting. So I'm gonna grab a couple things and get set up. Rifle, tripod, video gear, audio gear, top shelf, tobacco. Check. All right, shooters. So we're out here in beautiful Oregon at the base of Mount Hood, out here in the middle of nowhere. Love it. I absolutely love it. So today we're gonna be talking about rifle setup. So I'm gonna go through some components. I'm gonna talk about the main responsibilities I'm gonna talk about some considerations when you're looking for them. And I will sprinkle in a little bit of other options. So just so we're clear, this is all gonna be my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. Hopefully there's not any keyboard warriors that shit on me about some dumb thing that I say. But if so, let's have a conversation about it. Just my opinions. So first and foremost, let's start out with the backbone of the rifle, and that is, for this rifle, a chassis. So this is the American Rifle Company Xylo, X-Y-L-O. Fantastic chassis. I absolutely love it. Why do I love it? Well, one, it does all the things that any good, decent chassis or stock does. All right, it holds my components. That's the main responsibility. It holds all the components to the rifle. It keeps them secure. And then it provides me with adjustability. So I can adjust my cheek height up and down. I can adjust my length, length of pull in this direction. So shooters with longer arms or shorter arms, crucial to have the ability to change your length of pull like I said, with the cheek piece up and down, if I have large cheeks or I am morbidly overweight, I can bring it down so that my giant fat cheek can sit right on top of that cheek piece. If I'm super scrawny and I have no meat on my bones and I can bring it up to sit on my little bony cheeky face. Adjustability, crucial with the chassis. Also, why I love this one, you have a fantastic maple wood grip. Reason why I went with this chassis, so I was at a range and someone allowed me to get behind their rifle, which had the Xylo chassis. And as soon as I got behind it and shouldered it, and my hand slid right here on that nice maple wood, <laughs> I knew, I knew this was my chassis. So what did I do? I sold the gun. And I put that money towards building this one. Xylo chassis by American Rifle Company. Absolutely fantastic. Provides me with everything that I need. And it even has a little bubble level part of the chassis system. That doesn't come away. It stays with it all the time. Left-handed shooter, right-handed shooter, doesn't matter. Both sides. Amazing chassis. Main responsibility of the chassis, like I said, Housing and attaching all the components of the rifle. It's the backbone of the rifle. It holds everything together. Key considerations. Adjustability, like I talked about. Reliability. So all of those components that are attached, am I, am I able to rely on that chassis to hold everything where I need it to be? Are my bipods going to fall off? Is my action going to shake loose? Is my scope going to fall off? Shooter ready? Always ready.
Oh, shit. No, it's not going to because I have an American Rifle Company Xylo chassis. So that's it with the chassis. Let's move up to the action. So the action I'm using on this rifle is the Kelbly Atlas Tactical Action. Kelbly. I hate saying that name because it does not roll off the tongue in any way. It's K-E-L-B-L-Y. Kelbly. Doesn't make any sense. I hate it. But I love their action. This action in particular. So when I was going and looking for an action, I wanted something that would run through the cycle of operations. Cycle of operations being what happens when I have a magazine in and ammo in it. And I push this bolt forward. And I chamber that round. Lock it into place. Pull my trigger. Shoots. My bolt unlocks. Extracts. Ejects. Ammo comes out. And then the cycle continues. I need something that is going to go through those cycle of operations and do so reliably. So you're gonna see a trend here through all these components. Reliability and repeatability are two huge, huge considerations whenever we're talking about precision rifles. You want it reliable, you want it repeatable. So when I was looking at this action, it was recommended to me because the person who was recommending it to me knows that I am a filthy, dirty little scumbag and that I like to be dirty all the time. This action is actually known for performing under dirty conditions. So whether I have freshly cleaned it and lubed it, or I have gotten it a little dirty, it runs pretty much the same all the time. That's why I went with it. I'm not gonna go down any rabbit holes on all the specifics with different types of actions because you can get into a sea of information as far as it doesn't matter. There's a lot of options out there. Look, look at the different companies. Look at the descriptions. What is the purpose for them? A lot of your higher end ones perform super fabulously in clean conditions. But if there's a little dirt kicked up in there, they perform like shit. For me, I know that I don't want that because I know that this thing is going to get dirty. I am going to mistreat this thing. If you're not that type of person, then you can get a high-end one and expect it to perform accordingly as you keep it clean. Um, another little personal person words, another little um, thing that you can change and make it a little more you is your throws. So there's different types of throws. That's a quick thing that I'll talk about. So with throws it talks about that's talking about how high this this bolt has to come up this little arm the lever has to come up in order to unlock from the chamber so you see that this is almost all the way up touching my scope and so they make different degree levers and different degree throws for you to be able to unlock pros and cons I guess not really even any cons to having a shorter throw. It's just personal preference. So that's one thing to look for. And one thing that you might see, now you understand whatever degree throw is in reference to the height this lever has to come up for it to unlock so that I can pull it back and continue my cycle of operations. Moving up from the action, let's talk about scope bases and scope rings. Not gonna get super in the weeds because there's no need to. What do they do? They hold the scope. A scope base is one piece attached to the rail. Scope rings, two pieces attached to the rail. They sit on the rail, which should be a level rail, and then your scope sits inside of it. And then you work to level your scope. Key, key takeaway. If you haven't done this before and you're putting a scope into scope rings or scope mount, look at your torque settings. Do not over torque the rings or the mount because you will break your scope. Look at your torque settings. Outside of that, whenever you're looking at rings and mounts, if you find some for 20 bucks, don't buy those. Don't buy those. 
don't buy cheap with scope rings or a base. Don't cut corners, spend a little extra, get something that is going to be reliable and repeatable. Something that's not gonna allow your scope to move as you shoot thousands of rounds. That's enough about rings and bases. Next, we talk about scopes. A lot of different scopes out there. A lot of different scopes. If you're spending a lot of money on a scope, more than likely you're not going wrong. I'm gonna spit some knowledge. I'm gonna talk about this scope specifically. This is a Kala's 525 dynamic long range. Why do I have a Kala's? I don't fucking know. It's because some people that I know that are very proficient at what they do have these scopes. I was, I was fortunate enough to use them Loved them, thought the clarity of the glass was fantastic. I love that the parallax sits right here at the elevation knob, parallax we'll get to in a second. And I love the reticle pattern. And the icing on the cake was, I got hooked up with a discount. That's why I have a call is. Some other fantastic scopes and companies to look at, Vortex, has fantastic scopes. The Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 has been a fucking, a, at the top of the list for so long. And it's not a super high price scope. Whereas if you look at a zero compromise, super high price scope, super high quality scope. You look at Leupold. Leupold is a direction I would lean if I was looking more towards the hunting area. Even Burris, which I have on my hunting rifle, has come out with some nice scopes, which they have not been known for in the past. Burris, ha I, I have the Burris XTR3 on my hunting rifle. It is lightweight, sleek, everything that I want in a hunting scope. Leupold makes some fantastic, sleek, light scopes. Vortex, some heavier scopes, all around good performing. Night Force, if I could say one thing about Night Force, rugged rugged and reliable we use night force in the military and we could beat the absolute shit out of those scopes and they would never give up they would never stop doing their job so there's just a couple of the there's there's more but those are the ones that i'm gonna i'm gonna stop right there before i just go on a tangent so when we're looking at scopes what do we want from it well we obviously want a magnified view of the downrange area where we're shooting, where we're looking. We want the ability to make adjustments. So we want an elevation knob and a windage knob. The windage knob can be on either side of the scope, but generally it is on the side of the scope. The elevation and windage knob, all that they're responsible for is as I turn them and hear those clicks or whatever, as they're spinning, that reticle pattern is either going up and down or it's going left and right. And that's how I make adjustments for as I'm shooting downrange. Some other things you're gonna see on a scope is a magnification ring. You'll see a parallax knob generally on the collas as a parallax ring at the base of the elevation knob. You have a ocular focus ring. Sometimes you have some type of illuminating device that illuminates the reticle in the scope. So we talked about um, elevation and windage. So magnification is what, it is, is, what, is what it sounds like. It magnifies the picture that you're looking at. The parallax, let's talk about the parallax and the diopter focus ring. So this focus ring that's close to your eye. Correction, ocular focus ring. Ocular focus ring, what does it do? Focuses, focuses what? The ocular focus ring focuses your eye to the reticle. So you're focusing in this distance. Parallax. Easiest way to think about it is target focus. It's distance from this reticle pattern to that target. Easiest way to think about it. Keeping it simple. Haters hate. And then your illumination knob that's just illuminating a portion of the reticle and that's for low light conditions. Personal opinion, I don't give one shit if I have an illumination knob. I don't care. I never use it. I don't care. 
All right, and that pretty much sums it up with the scope. Again, just like some of the other components that we've talked about, reliability, repeatability. That's what I want from this. If I accidentally dropped it, not off of here because that's like 200 feet down, the gun would literally die. But if I dropped it right here, I would hope that my scope is able to survive this fall. I'm confident that it is. I'm not gonna do it on camera because I don't wanna, not an asshole. Reliable, it can take a little bit of a beating and I want it repeatable. I want it to do the same thing all the time. I don't want to change it up on me. All right, so stepping down, down from the scope, going to the trigger. The trigger that I have in this rifle is a Timney hit trigger. I love it. I have had zero issues with it. I don't, I'm sure that there's little girls out there that complain about every little aspect of everything on their gun. I'm simple, I am easy to please. With a trigger, what do I want? I want to be able to pull it and it makes the gun go bang. I want to pull it and the gun goes bang. And every time that I do that, I want it to pull at the same weight. I don't want to pull once and have a half pound trigger, cycle the bolt, and then the next pull is a five pound trigger. I don't want that. So I want reliable, I pull it, it shoots, and repeatable, every time that I pull, it is repeating the same pull. I don't want it changing. So for me, Timony hit, I have it dialed in at 1.5 pounds. I think 1.5 pounds is like the perfect spot for me. If I get any lower than that, I ND, I ND, I have a negligent discharge when I'm just trying to zero. I don't like that, it scares me. And then when it's too heavy, I just, I, I'm fine with that with different guns, but with a precision rifle, I want everything to be nice, sleek, delicate, nice little touch gun shoots. I watch the bullet travel. I see the impact on target. I hear everyone say impact and everything's great. <laughs> Timony hit. Moving up. We'll move all the way, we'll move to the barrel. We can go down some rabbit holes on barrels. I'm gonna keep it simple. If you're competing or whatever job that you're doing with a rifle, whatever you're doing with it, if you plan to shoot a lot of rounds fast, you want a heavier barrel. You want a fluted barrel. You want a barrel that's good at dissipating heat. If I'm hunting, if I'm a hunter, or if I'm a hobbyist, and I'm just doing this for fun, and I'm not really tied to any requirement of performance, <coughs> then I'd be okay with, <coughs> oh, then I would be okay with a lighter barrel. But, to the uninitiated, if you have a light barrel, and you're shooting bullets through it, and it gets hot quick, what do you think happens? What does heat do to material? Causes expansion. So you think all the little molecules in here heating up and expanding, they're not as rigid anymore, so you got a literally a fucking noodle barrel. The barrel's not gonna hold rigidity and your rounds aren't gonna do what they're supposed to do, so it's not gonna be repeatable. Maybe for one, two, maybe three rounds. Light barrels. Do not handle fast shooting well, which is why people in the competition world have heavy barrels. So big consideration, heavy versus light barrel. And then you can start talking about the different contours of barrel. So there's different shapes that barrels come in. Not gonna dive into that. You can look into that on your own. Just remember heavy versus light, pro versus con. Do I wanna carry heavier? Do I wanna carry lighter? How many rounds am I gonna be shooting? Moving down the barrel to the muzzle device. A lot of muzzle devices on the market. Run through them real quick. So we have flash hiders. What are flash hiders? Literally what they, what the, what the name is, it hides flash. 
Does it hide flash downrange from the receiving end? No, you can't hide that because there's gas burning coming out the barrel. Literally, like if I was shooting at you, the gas would be burning that way. Can't hide that. It hides flash from shooter's perspective. So that would be fantastic for guys who are operating under night vision. If I'm shooting rounds, I don't want a bunch of over, you know, over gassing, igniting and blinding me. So it helps consolidate that flash. Compensators and muzzle devices, I'll put those in the same basket. They're responsible for manipulating the gas as it goes down the barrel to mitigate the movement of the barrel. Compensator, muzzle device, help with recoil reduction or just general stabilization of the recoil process. Because when this gun recoils, where does it want to go? Path of least resistance, which generally is like this. If you have shitty positioning behind your rifle, it could be like this or like that but generally it's up in this direction. Compensators, muzzle devices, or compensators, muzzle brakes, help cut that down. And then we have suppressors. Suppressors can slide over the barrel, they can screw into the end, they can be attached in a number of different ways. What do they do? Suppressor, silencer, same fucking thing. What do they do? They decrease the decibels, created by the round exploding. One. Two, they increase the muzzle velocity of your rifle. Sometimes I have heard it doesn't. From my personal experience, everything that I have seen says, yes, having a can on your gun increases the muzzle velocity. So you get decibel reduction, increase in muzzle velocity, and a little, little cherry, extra weight at the end of your barrel. That extra weight, we know the barrel wants to do this when it shoots, so extra weight helps mitigate some of that recoil. So you get a nice, a nice little package deal with suppressors. And then there's hybrid style muzzle devices, which take a little bit of everything and put it into one little sweet thing. So that's it with the muzzle devices. On this rifle, I have a Area 419 um, Hellfire match. So it's just a four port muzzle brake. From my personal experience with this muzzle brake, combined with the weights that I can add to my chassis, I saw a dramatic decrease in the felt and perceived recoil from this rifle. I thoroughly love this. The one downside is if you're on a firing line and you have a three port, four port, whatever muzzle brake, and they're directed this way, compensators are generally directed like this, muzzle brakes like that, it's gonna reach out and touch the guys around you. They're not gonna like it, especially if they have suppressors. So another really nice thing about this is you get to piss everyone off around you. I love this brake. Pisses everyone off. Enough about muzzle devices. Moving down to our last component, bipods. A lot of bipods out there. A lot of fancy ones do all kinds of stuff, have different kinds of feet, different kinds of extensions, different angles that they can set on. I hate all of them. I hate all of them. I have not used one other than this one that I like. This is a Harris bipod. It is super simple. You don't get a lot of options. It is push it up for them to stay up. If I want them down, push them down. And if you wanna be a really high speed you can even attach a little piece of 550 cord in the middle, so you just pull once, and it pulls both of them down. And you push once, and it pushes both of them up. And if you want your legs a little bit longer, all I do is push this little button. Oh, and I get all that extra height. Simple. There are other bipods out there, though. And so if you use those, you're gay, but 
you get a couple advantages. You can change the feet for different types of conditions. So imagine you see, I don't know, whether you're competing or you're hunting animals or you're hunting people, you're like, oh, that looks like a really good shooting position. Hold on, let me change my bipod feet out real quick. Let me put these spiky ones on so I don't slide around over there. And you take your time changing those out. You get over your position, you hit your little button to drop them down and it drops four feet to the ground, but you want it at like a 35 degree angle and it'll do that. There are bipods that'll do that. So you can get at a 35 degree angle and by the time you get on your scope and you're ready to go, your target's gone. I'm just hating, I'm just hating. I like the Harris bipods. They're simple, easy to use, they don't fail. Other bipods, they do a lot of cool things. I just personally don't like it or care about it. And that's rifle setup. That is rifle setup. Those are, those are all the big takeaways from rifle setup. That's all I got, that's all I got. Keeping it simple, if you got any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. Uh, this is probably not the end of the video. There's probably gonna be like inserts of other shit at some point. Yeah, thank you all for your time.